Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as right now it's time for a night beat. And whilst I have in the past joked that that name sounds like something that you get up to on your own in the middle of the night, I am today talking about this guy. It's MB12A Nightwalker from Fans Hobby. Let's see what it's all about. MB12A Nightwalker is the latest offering from third-party company Fans Hobby and sees them bringing to life the idiosyncratic Autobot detective Nightbeat. The toy is actually a repaint of Fans Hobby's own Athena figure, although I'm sure many fans will relish the chance to check out a masterpiece-styled attempt at such a popular character. That's in large part down to Nightbeat's portrayal in the Generation 1 Marvel comic, including the UK exclusive storylines, where his no-nonsense approach to crime solving quickly caught the eye. That and his memorable appearance, even what's gracing a cover in signature trench coat style, mean that it's truly exciting to see the first third-party take on the character in modern form. I'll be keen to see how Nightwalker shapes up today then, and of course we'll be doing plenty of comparisons with other Masterpiece style toys along the way. Last thing before we begin, today's review is sponsored by TF Source, so you'll find a link to their site in the video description below. The plan for today is to give you my first impressions before getting a full photo review up on their blog soon. Right, well here's Nightwalker in his box and the first thing to say is it's absolutely tiny. Uh, there's actually a little sign just here saying actual size for the Headmaster. Uh, not so much for the car, but still it's pretty minuscule. Then on the back we've got some nice promo shots of the toy and this little battle scene just down there with a few of Fans Hobby's other figures. It's uh, really all quite good fun. Now I should say that this is, I believe, a sample direct from uh, Fans Hobby's factory. So uh, yeah, it's uh, not got any tape or anything on the box. Uh, and he's going to come out upside down. Never mind, we'll flip him over. Uh, but there we go. Fairly straightforward little box and little clamshell inside. There we go. And the toy itself. Right, well, also included in the box is this little guy who's absolutely tiny. This is, of course, meant to represent Nightbeat's little partner, headmaster partner, called Muzzle. And to accompany him, there's an additional face just here. Of course, he turns into Nightbeat's head, or Nightwalker's head. Uh, but you do get a spare face in there. We'll take a look at that in a bit. And uh, a little helmet piece just there on the right as well. There is a little bit of parts forming on the uh, on the headmaster. Uh, but as I say, we'll check that out. You then get this little pair of guns, which fold up and they can store on his hips, exactly the same as with Athena. You get a little baggie with some instructions, a character card and these stickers as well so we'll take a look at those in just a minute and of course you get the toy itself and my word does it make quite the first impression I mean look if you've already got Athena you pretty much know what you're in for here because I don't think there's much in the way of remolding or anything like that but still with the new blue and yellow color scheme and the flames on the side this thing is looking mighty hot now I know that in many ways Athena had her detractors in the end although I have to say I really enjoyed that toy myself uh, but I think one thing most people agree on is that it really nailed the car mode and so it is here and it's a kind of recreation of a Porsche 959 uh, and honestly it looks spiffing. I mean really every angle looks absolutely superb. There's no kibble to speak of on this thing. It's all exceptionally tidy and it all just looks really considered and cohesive. Good job. Just looking at it from the front you've got these two translucent plastic headlights. They look really nice and then you've got this yellow and orange painted section on the front which seems to be really well done. Paint looks crisp, nicely applied uh, and, and a good colour as well. There was a couple of photos that I saw of this thing early on where I wasn't sure if the colours were going to look vivid enough, but actually, in hand, that looks great. And you know, the, the paint doesn't look thin, it all comes off really well. Yeah, it's good. Now there's rubber tyres as well, so I'm sure that'll keep uh, a lot of people happy. And it does roll really well, sits really flush on the floor, and uh, yeah, feels like it could go for days. <laughs> Now one thing on the original Nightbeat toy was that the flame decals on the side, part of his signature look, were actually stickers. They were kind of clear stickers, uh, clear back stickers. And they always have a habit of looking a bit dog-eared or whatever on second-hand copies. So it can be a bit of a nightmare. No such drama here though, because they're actually tampoed on. So that's a, that's a nice touch. And I say that because genuinely, I wasn't quite sure how Fans Hobby were gonna tackle it, actually. Uh, I mean, at least with the original, you can always get uh, you know repro labels from toy hacks, uh, which is very, very useful. We'll take 
a look at my G1 original and do a comparison in just a minute, and you'll see I actually do have the uh, the Toy Hacks labels on there. Uh, but uh, still, you know, it's nice to see them tampoed here, and I think the flame effect looks really good. There's a nice little gradient to it, and uh, yeah, it, it works well. Now you've then got these little wing mirrors on the side, uh, which are movable. Actually, they will move for transformation. They feel like they could be a little bit tighter. Like I've already nudged them out of orientation a couple of times, and they do feel just like not loose, but like they do definitely feel like maybe they could just be a little bit stiffer than maybe they are. Now blacked out windows on this guy, which is a bit of a strange look actually. I, I guess they've tried to recreate the G1 original toy, uh, which did have windows very much like that, uh, but it's a bit of a departure for a masterpiece style toy, uh, and especially as Athena herself actually had blue translucent windows as well, so uh, strange choice I, I think. I probably would have preferred slightly see-through, but uh, it doesn't look bad by any means. Some nice moulded detail on areas such as this, you know, you've got these little vents just here. Are those vents? I don't know. And is this the petrol cap? I'm guessing that might be. I don't know, someone like Santiago Jones or someone else can correct me on that. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to know their stuff far more than I do. Uh, but at least it has those little moulded elements, uh, like the little door handle just here, this little thing, whatever that is. Uh, I don't know, you tell me what those are. You know, I've also got little paint applications on areas such as this vent just here, that's kind of cool. And then some little red plastic for the uh, tail lights just there. Uh, and no license plate as yet, but there are stickers for that, as we'll see in just a moment. So overall, really tidy vehicle mode. I think it looks really, really great. Probably the only bit that I'm not so sure about is the little hinge just there, which for some reason, <laughs> with your wing mirror again, uh, for some reason I didn't really notice that hinge so much on Athena. Maybe it's just because it was the white plastic. Uh, whereas here, it does stick out a little bit, but honestly, it's a small, small, tiny imperfection on an otherwise very tidy vehicle form. In fact, the only thing I might say against it is just the, the finish being just bare plastic overall, apart from the kind of paint and the, you know, the yellow paint down here, uh, just leaves it looking a little bit not unspectacular, just, I don't know, it doesn't have that same kind of painted quality that you do get on, uh, uh, you know, some toys. It's just the, the kind of bare plastic. Uh, but still, it does look really nice in hand. I, I am wowed by it. It's really nice. Uh, and it's just great to see Nightbeat given some justice. Now, keep talking about these stickers that are included. And here they are. So you can see just here you've got a couple of license plate options. Uh, so these larger ones are for the back. And then you've got the smaller ones for the front. Uh, and of course, that's just the kind of model number for the toy, uh, if indeed you want to include those. I did on Athena. I'm not sure if I will do with this one or not. I'm going to maybe decide later. Uh, and then you've got a couple of other bits. Uh, you've got some little visors there for the robot mode head uh, and other bits for the inside of the car as well. So it's really just the license plate for the outside of the car mode. But still, it's a nice inclusion. Now, looking at what else is in the box, of course, here you've got his Nebulon partner, Muzzle. And uh, of course, it's a straight up repaint of Athena, who's here on the left. Uh, and of course, this is actually, uh, in Athena's case anyway, uh, the main character, because in Master Force, you know, all the headmasters uh, were just, uh, well, children in uh, in Minerva's case. Uh, but, you know, humans binary bonded with lifeless robots. Uh, whereas, of course, a muzzle is actually a, a little dude bonded with a more traditional Autobot. So it's a, it's a little bit different, but yes, yeah, straight up remold. But I do really love how the colour difference makes them look quite different, even if there isn't actually any moulding changes at all. Uh, and of course, it still inherits all of the great little articulations and features and all of that good stuff from the original. I mean, taking a closer look at this guy, you can see uh, that actually he's quite decent in the articulation stakes. Anyway, you can move him uh, just at the arms like so. And there is actually a bit of, uh, it's quite stiff, but a bit of elbow bend as well. There we go, <laughs> can actually get the elbows to bend. Uh, and there is a, a bit of a, a knee uh, articulation as well, just like that. Uh, and of course the hips, uh, and of course his, uh, his head will move around a bit as well. So all told, he's, uh, yeah, he's quite articulated for such a tiny little thing. And there's even an ab crunch of sorts due to the transformation. So you really can get him into some quite nice poses actually. So how's this for a bit of a size comparison for you? I've got him here with various different headmasters from different companies. You've got uh, from left to right, Fans Toys, Make Toys, KFC, uh, of course, this is the, the one from this release. <laughs> then you've got MP10 Spike, and you've got a little Titan Master as well uh, from uh, Earthrise Scorponok. And it's interesting to see how so many different companies have interpreted the size of the Headmasters to be a little bit different. Uh, although, of course, this being a remold of Athena, uh, which is Minerva, you know, it's a, a junior Headmaster, so a little bit smaller anyway, uh, but still it gives you a good idea. And then here's a comparison with the original G1 muzzle, which is a very simple little thing, uh, but yeah, it's kind of
of fun to see. So definitely larger than that one anyway. Now the fun thing here is that you can also have the headmaster actually driving the car as well as installing the weapons on the inside. Now this bit will flip up, this little kind of cockpit uh, section just there, but actually it's going to be easier if you just take the entire roof off like so. Now the first thing that's going to do is enable you to slot in the little guns like so, uh, and it's a wee bit fiddly, uh, but isn't always but there you go they just kind of go in on the sides like that both guns uh, just storing and that's kind of in the the boot area next you can take the top of the uh, the headmaster helmet and just kind of slot it in just like so then we want to get muzzle in his actual little driver's seat and uh, it's not too bad it is a little bit fiddly uh, but his legs just kind of ram in under there like so and then you just close up the little kind of cockpit section like that and it's a convertible no I'm joking uh, you just <laughs> Uh, you're going to go ahead and put the roof back on, of course. So that just kind of slots in in the middle there, down like so, and just kind of clip it all back together along the sides. Uh, it just takes a little bit of doing to get everything in the right place. There you go. It's not too bad. Once you get it, perfectly easy to do. And obviously once it's sealed up again, you can't really see him through the windshield or anything like that, uh, which you could on Minerva, but at least if you flip that piece up, then uh, hey, there he is. So yeah, a couple of gimmicks to keep you uh, having a bit of fun there. But overall, you know, even without that, I do think that the car mode is really nice. I think that my one criticism is perhaps that slightly too dark windshield, which does give it a bit of a signature look, but it does kind of kill the, the Headmaster gimmick just a little bit as well. Uh, but overall, very nice car mode indeed. Now, in terms of comparisons, here he is, of course, with the original Nightbeat. This is the uh, 1988 Generation 1 toy. Uh, really love this thing. Absolutely fantastic design as it is. Uh, I know it looks a little bit goofy, maybe, next to the fans' hobby version, but I still love it. Loads of charm. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, mine actually does have uh, repro labels on it, toyhacks.com. Uh, uh, do those. I'll go ahead and put a link in the video description below so you can, you can check that out if, indeed, you're interested. Uh, you know, just because, you know, for so often you get generation one toys second hand <laughs> they all look really good but the stickers are kind of you know dinged or not looking so good or, or whatever it might be uh, so uh, toy hacks got you covered and they do lots of stuff for uh, new toys and things as well generations masterpiece all kinds of jazz so do go ahead and check it out anyway you can see what these two look like together there you go and then again here you can see a size comparison with masterpiece mp25 tracks just here and uh, i figured you know two blue cars both with flame emblems why not eh uh, and uh, they do look really good together actually i like how they look i think the only uh, kind of area as i already mentioned earlier that um maybe the fans hobby figure falls down on a little bit is the unpainted finish whereas tracks has a very nice sparkly blue uh, and looks all the better for it so that's probably my one kind of main area of critique here but otherwise they do look really good together and here's another vehicle mode comparison for you this is with mp44 convoy the third and current masterpiece optimus prime uh, and again I, I think that works really well to my eye got him here with a couple of the dx9 stunticons if for no other reason than people keep asking me to make videos of these lads and i keep saying i will and i promise i will i'm getting to it don't worry and as a final comparison here here he is with Athena. You expected nothing less, I'm sure. Uh, and they do look really, really good together. Quite different on account of their uh, very, very individual colour schemes. That really helps. Uh, even though there is no kind of real remoulding between the two, uh, yeah, they, they they shape up nicely as a pair. I still think that maybe Athena has something uh, really nice going on with the old uh, red cross and, and white motif. It just looks really, really good. As much as I am a fan of the flames and the blue on Nightwalker, I can't help but think that maybe, maybe she's my favourite. Also worked out why I never clocked that hinge before and why it looks uh, so obvious on Nightwalker. It's because on Athena, it's quite simply hidden by the light bar. So there you go, I wasn't going mad. It just wasn't visible before. Anyway, car mode's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and check out the robot mode and that transformation.
there we go, that's transformation done. And honestly, I really don't think that it's too bad on this toy. Exactly the same as with Athena, so if you have experienced that, then you'll know what you're in for. But if you haven't, I think it's it's pretty easy. And the result does look pretty good overall. I mean, I liked it on Athena already, so of course I'm gonna like it here as well. Uh, but the one criticism that I probably would level at this thing, and I'm sure it'll come up again, is that it does kinda look like Minerva in Nightbeat colors, if anything. You know, I think that it probably did work a little bit better for their Athena. Uh, you know, their original uh, version of this mold. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it's, it just doesn't scream Nightbeat to me, some of the proportions and things like that. He's just like a bit more kind of blocky, angular, chunky, uh, in my mind anyway. And, and something about this design, I really like the look of it, but it's not classic Nightbeat, that's fair to say. It's a bit more stylized. Uh, it is quite tidy, however, so there's a lot to like on that score. I mean, if you do a little 360, you can see from the side. Uh, not too much kibble going on. I mean, it's got this little uh, bit at the back, obviously here, this kind of, it, it feels like it should be a shield, the kind of backpack that it should come off and work as a shield. It doesn't. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute, but uh, I think it's, it's pretty tidy, all things considered, and uh, same from a back view as well. Now, one thing that is different from the original release is the face, and uh, actually the head itself, all of this, uh, these little antenna just up here, and the actual head sculpt is the same. It's specifically the face that is new only. And uh, I do kind of like it. I mean, it's got this kind of red visor on there, which looks pretty sparkly. Uh, the yellow is a bit of a weird one, actually, in this mode. Like, the uh, there's some bits that are, are bare plastic and some bits that are painted. I don't know how much I like that yellow. It's kind of like a little bit greeny to my eye. And uh, it's okay. It's not bad, but... Um, hmm. Uh, and the face sculpt is a little bit stylized for my taste as well. Uh, he's, he's handsome, but just maybe not quite night beaty to me. Now, this section of the chest is slightly remolded as well. Uh, this little silver paint application is new, and of course the whole thing is a uh, slightly different shape to what it was on Athena. That's one of the main bits of remolding here, and it all looks good. Now, same as on Athena, you've got the little gimmick just there, so if you pull down the chest, you've got the little uh, kind of tech spec decals just inside. Uh, classic Headmaster gimmick, that is. Uh, just showing typically speed, strength, and intelligence, although they're not marked here. But um, it's a bit of a fun thing, you know, little gimmick. Nice callback to the original toy as well. Now, elsewhere, there is some remolding going on, but actually not as much as you might suspect. I mean, areas such as the hips just here, that's all completely carried over from Athena, uh, as is this lower part of the chest, uh, the kind of ab section. Uh, now, the arms, uh, things like the forearms are new pieces and they are made to be slightly more angular uh, it's interesting though because you wouldn't necessarily notice it to begin with I mean you could honestly just look at it and think that that was just you know a straight repaint from Athena but they have given it some new pieces in areas such as this that uh, again just slightly more blocky than they maybe would be uh, I don't know if it's quite enough for me to give me that night beat vibe but um, but still it's something and the same is true down here you know with areas such as the thighs having been remolded to be just that touch more angular again I don't know if it goes enough though do you know what I mean it still looks fairly stylized but uh, but hey ho handsome bot on the whole now I do just quickly want to address this backpack thing again because I know with Athena people have plenty to say about this you know people really wanted it to kind of come off and form a shield other people really hated the fact that it needed to be taken off uh, and you know was essentially parts forming for the transformation I never really saw it like that though I think um, I mean you definitely cannot transform it without it coming off let's put it that way but it's something that never really bothered me to be honest on the original release and it doesn't here I actually think it's very tidy uh, sort of you know stacks away pretty neatly on the back uh, is fairly animation accurate for Minerva anyway for the original toy uh, and I don't think it looks bad for Nightbeat either. I kind of dig it. Now, as before, these uh, sort of shoulder sections, uh, these sort of like big shoulder pads, shoulder pylons, that's going to be a real love it or hate it solution for a lot of people, I fear. Uh, I don't mind it personally, and I think when you get them into kind of the right orientation, they look uh, they look fine, you know, kind of like that. But they definitely don't tab into the sides of the arms or anything. Uh, you can kind of roll them around and position them at the back a little bit, if indeed you prefer. Uh, I do think, you know, that this is probably the best that they're going to look out to the sides as they're kind of meant to be uh, but it's definitely a bit of a choice and can be a little bit fiddly i'm also finding that this bit here is just kind of popping open a little bit just as i'm kind of moving the legs around and uh, and whatever else just kind of giving it a good old going over uh, so that's slightly annoying doesn't feel the most secure there overall then some definite quirks to the look of this robot mode and if anything i feel like maybe the remolding doesn't quite go far enough in order to really convince me on the character on this one but still if you're willing to accept a, a quite stylized interpretation of nightbeat there is still a lot to like here. 
it's fair to say. Uh, that said, if you weren't a fan of Athena, which some people weren't, you're probably not going to be won over by Nightwalker either, it's fair to say. Uh, but if you did like that toy, you're definitely going to like this one, because they're essentially the same thing, aren't they? Let's be fair. Now, articulation-wise, there's a, a decent enough range at the head. I mean, it can look side to side like that. Uh, that's actually just the actual headmaster's uh, head articulation working there. Uh, can look forward a little bit as well, which is cool. Can't really look up though in any way. Now very good articulation at the arms because uh, uh, they can move back and forth like so. Uh, and then there is a hinge like that coming up at the uh, at the shoulder. Uh, this is a little bit unsightly there. You do get a bit of a visual gap underneath, but um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you will also find that these uh, shoulder pads uh, impede against the head quite a bit. So you can just kind of move them out of the way a little bit, but there's no there's nowhere really for them to go that they're not in the way i think it's fair to say uh, now there is a bicep swivel like so and a very decent range uh, all the way up at the elbow and then you get major articulation in the hands as well uh, because the thumb is articulated uh, all four fingers are on one piece but they are articulated like so so you can kind of make a little fist now there is a waist swivel as well but in fact it's on a ball joint so you get really decent ab crunch uh, bend backwards as well so really like a lot of posability at that waist you then get very decent articulation at the hips uh, which go, well, actually, I say very decent, just about to 90 degrees because it's slightly impeded just there uh, by the hip skirt, uh, which doesn't move out of the way, so that's kind of, kind of a molded piece. Uh, and then you will get 90 degrees again at the knee, uh, and then a bit of toe articulation and uh, ankle tilt as well. Feet are a little bit weird, actually, I've got to say. I always did think that uh, on Athena, and, uh, and obviously it's carried over here. Uh, so, yeah, not as much articulation in the legs as... Um, I might have hoped for. You've definitely got enough articulation to crank out some decent poses though and it's really not hard to kind of move this guy around and, uh, and get him looking decent. Then of course you want to check out the guns. Now one thing you can do as with on Athena is uh, just position uh, and kind of holster the little guns on the side of the hips. So that's kind of cool. I really like that feature. Uh, you know for a bit of play value I think that's uh, pretty nifty. You know otherwise it's the old peg in palm method. Uh, so you just kind of secure them in the hand like so, wrap the fingers round, and voila, Nightwalker looks like he's ready for action. And I do love any robot that looks as decent as this whilst dual wielding their weapons. So yeah, a lot of fun. And then final gimmick here is of course that orange face, that spare face that you've got. And uh, it's a bit of a weird one because people may be wondering why have you just got some random orange face thrown in the box, but it's actually meant to look more like the Generation 1 Nightbeat toy, which does have an orange face. And uh, yeah, it's all a bit of a weird one because of course in the original comic, the Marvel comic, uh, Nightbeat and Siren actually ended up head swapped uh, in how they were depicted by the artists at the time. Uh, I'm assuming that maybe they had uh, the toys to hand but uh, just had the wrong heads on. Uh, so it's a bit of a well-known thing. Uh, so his sort of, um, I suppose if you like, his fictional portrayal doesn't really match the toy, the original toy. Uh, but this is what it would have looked like anyway. And speaking of the G1 toy, here it is of course with Nightwalker. And I think here you can see what I'm saying when I uh, talk about Nightwalker quite clearly being a bit of a Minerva repaint, you know, looking like Minerva in Nightbeat colors. Uh, and I think that's, you know, because obviously with the original toy, uh, these two don't sync up too much. And that's because Minerva's animation model was quite a departure. Uh, and then the original Athena toy, having tried to crib off the animation model, means that it's been taken away uh, you know further from that g1 mold uh, and consequently there are departures between them you know things like the legs where you've got the back of the car for the legs on the g1 toy and then the front of the car for the legs on nightwalker it's not a deal breaker by any means but it does set it apart you know things like the arms are obviously noticeably different uh, but there are little cues as well you know they've included things like the chest just there with that little molded detail there that's quite nice uh, but overall yeah definite departure clearly very stylized um, I do prefer the colors on the original Nightbeat as well I will say I think the yellow is like a bit more like a touch more golden uh, a touch more kind of buttery and a bit nicer not quite as green as the Nightwalker version so hmm, that's that's definitely a thing but um, but still it's uh, it's good to see Nightbeat getting some love at least here you got a bit of a comparison with some masterpiece car bots you know we've got Sunstreaker and the plus version of Smokescreen and I think he does look pretty good overall. I mean, the height is really nice. Uh, and that's kind of a big uh, a big selling factor for a lot of people, I'm sure. And generally, the appearance is on point. It just doesn't kind of have the same painted finish as these guys, but still very nice overall. And I'm sure some people might be struggling with where to put this guy in their collection. You know, he's not a, a classic cartoon bot, so where does he slot in? Uh, I think there's all kinds of things you could do with him, actually. I mean, here he is with Masterpiece Artfire, which I love, love that toy, uh, and Make Toys Bounce Back, you know, their version of Stepper or Ricochet, whichever you prefer. Uh, 
Uh, and I think that looks kind of cool. You know, they're kind of, uh, they're both target masters uh, by designation. So maybe that works for you, I don't know. And you know, speaking of other masters, here he is with the Make Toys Headmasters, the two of the four that we've had so far. Anyway, please make the others make toys, please. Uh, but anyway, here he is with Iron Will and Cuppola. Uh, which happens to be one of my favourite third-party figures as it goes. Uh, and I'm sure some people will think that Nightwalker is too small. Uh, I actually never really had a major problem with it with Athena because, you know, she was meant to be a junior headmaster and so it kind of worked in that regard. Uh, but I think, yeah, people will definitely have opinions about how well this one works. Uh, is it that Capola is too large or is it that Nightwalker is too small? Or is it a bit of, bo a bit of both? I don't know, <laughs> you decide. Uh, I mean, Nightwalker, to his credit, is the same size as a Masterpiece Carbot, so I'm sure there's some logic there as well. Uh, so maybe it's Cuppa. I don't know. You tell me. Now, of course, you've always got to have an Optimus Prime comparison, don't you? Uh, and here he is with Transform Element Op Leader standing in for a Masterpiece Optimus Prime. They're all the same size, though. Same size as MP10, MP44. So there you go. I think he looks uh, pretty decent. Alternatively, you could have him with Fans Hobby's own Power Baser, which is uh, obviously a take on uh, God Jinrai. Uh, or in this case, Power Master Optimus Prime, because I've put the old uh, upgrade kit on him that you can get to give him a Marvel Comics uh, appearance. And uh, maybe that will work for people. You know, these guys are both uh, big comic characters, especially in the UK run. And uh, it's kind of fun to see. But of course, the comparison that we really want to see is with Athena, just to kind of get a real sense of how different these two are. And you'll notice straight away, I'm sure, that they are pretty similar, let's be fair. It's exa exactly what I said before uh, in that Nightwalker very much is Minerva in Nightbeat colours. And I think that's the, the kind of thing that I keep coming back to with this toy. Uh, it's nice and it's a really cool homage to a, a great character. Um, but, you know, there are compromises for sure. I mean, I've no doubt that a lot of people would be really hoping for a masterpiece Nightbeat built from the ground up and, you know, looking exactly like his comic portrayal or the toy or whatever the, the kind of influence is that you want to go for. Uh, so, you know, in that regard, you're kind of starting off uh, maybe not on the foot that people might truly wish for. That said, I think that Fans Hobby have done a really nice job with it. And, uh, you know, where they have put in differences between the two, it's certainly appreciated. I mean, again, you can see it on areas such as the thighs uh, and the forearms just there as well on the chest. Uh, so, you know, it's not huge differences, but they are there and they are appreciated. I mean, is it enough to convince people to double dip on the mold? I don't know, maybe, like if you really like Tathena uh, and you want to give it another go, there's certainly a lot to like here. I don't think it's essential to own both, so equally it might just be a, a choice of, you know, which do you prefer? Uh, but uh, they are both really nice versions. I think maybe Athena still takes it for me. I just really like the colour scheme on that overall, and uh, it's a very nice uh, homage to a great character. Uh, so maybe that one takes it. But still, there's a lot of fun to be had with Nightwalker. Overall then, it comes down to what I think probably a lot of us would have suspected of this toy. It's a, it's a very nice repaint. It's not the ultimate masterpiece Nightbeat. So if that is what you're hoping for here, I'm not saying you'll be disappointed, but it's it's not that, let's put it that way. It is a nice repaint though, as I say, and I do think that Fans Hobby have done a good job with it on the whole, and if you like the Athena mold, you're probably gonna like this one, let's be fair. So it's not an out and out, you've definitely gotta own this toy, but it is, you know, it's, it's a good, decent toot. And as I already mentioned, this guy is available for pre-order on tfsource.com now, so I'll go ahead and put a link to their listing in the video description below. And I would love to know your thoughts as well. Do you like what you see? Do you prefer Athena? Do you prefer this guy? Where are you at with it? So, uh, otherwise, that's it from me. So don't forget to drop me a like if you enjoyed today's video, and have a great rest of your day. TTFN. <laughs>